Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash pro revenge. This story was posted by user anonymous annie5523. I helped someone get revenge on their gold digging ass of an SO. This happened some years ago but was just reminded of it so here you go Reddit. I worked as a front desk agent in a large luxury hotel chain for some years. One particular hotel I worked at was located really close to the downtown area and so we got a large number of young, very wealthy business people who loved to party. I usually worked the second and third shifts which meant I got to see loads of drunken hookups, breakups, cheating, hookers and more. This particular one though, this is one I will never forget. I was working at the desk when a group of young, well-dressed men came walking in. They've all clearly been drinking but aren't so drunk that they can't walk right and hold a conversation. One of them comes up to me and tells me that while he and his friends were at the bar, a woman was hitting on him, and even though he told her no multiple times, she wouldn't stop. So he and his friends left, and it wasn't until they got in the Uber that he realised he didn't have his room key anymore. He thinks she took it, and he's concerned that she may come up to his room. He asks that I deactivate his key, and if she does come up to the hotel, to not let her in. When he was telling me all of this, it didn't sit right with me. He and his friends were all grinning about it and snickering amongst one another. Then he gave a clear description of her without being asked. He told me height, body shape, hair colour and style, the kind of dress she was wearing, all while saying it in a mocking tone. Now this could have easily been because he thought the whole thing was ridiculous or was too drunk to take it seriously, but it really didn't sound right to me. Either way, I did as I was trained in that situation. I pulled up his reservation, deactivated the keys as requested, made him a new set when he showed me his ID and even offered to move him to a new room if that would make him feel more comfortable. He and his buddies all laughed a little at that and he declined, took the keys and they went to their room. About an hour or so later, the woman he described showed up. Now by this point, my relief for the night had shown up and was sitting at the front desk while I was in the back office counting down my cash drawer. I hadn't had the chance to tell him about the woman. Just as I'm walking out the back office with my bag and about to leave, I see my co-worker buzz the doors open and the woman comes rushing in, cuts through the lobby and down the hall to the elevators. She was barefoot, holding her heels in her hands and knew exactly where she was going. I rushed up to him and told him what the man from before had told me about her. My co-worker looked at me confused. He then pointed to the screen that had the reservation pulled up and told me that when the woman arrived, she went to use the room keys and they didn't work. So he asked her for her room number and last name. She gave both and her name is on the reservation. I looked at the reservation and down in the notes, there was a woman's name listed. The man from before was listed as the primary, but her name was listed as secondary with his consent to be in the room. I was confused. I thought maybe she wasn't the same woman he was talking about, but to be on the safe side, I called the man in his room and told him the situation and that we allowed a woman fitting that description he gave to enter the building because she confirmed her name was on the room. He laughed, said he forgot her name was on the room and asked that I remove it. I was now super confused. I asked to make sure. Me. Sir. Just to be clear, the woman you met at the bar tonight was with you at check-in hours ago and was allowed keys then, but now she is not? Him. Laughs at all his friends in the room. Oh, guys, I confused the poor girl. Gets back on the phone with me. Yes, yeah, sweetheart, she's banned from the room. Don't worry about the other details. Just take her name off. I see. Then if she isn't going to be on the room anymore, would you like us to call the police and have her removed from the property? Him. Ha <laughs> ha, whoa, that's too far there. Don't worry, she'll get the hint soon enough. We ended the call there and I got really suspicious of this. I told my co-worker to not do anything and that I was going to stick around for a bit to see if anything happened. A short time later, the woman came off the elevator, pouring tears, sobbing while on the phone with somebody. She sat down in our lobby and my co-worker and I tried to look busy while eavesdropping hard on her phone call. She was sobbing on the phone to her mom and sister. From what she told them, she was invited out to spend the week with her boyfriend, meeting all of his old college buddies. This being their first night, they all met up for dinner and drinks. After a bit, she went to the restroom, and when she came back, she caught her boyfriend hitting on another woman. His friends all bet that he wouldn't do it. When she confronted him pissed off, he called her a bunch of names and humiliated her in front of his friends and the entire bar. All of his friends joined in on mocking her, and he threw in her face that she was nothing without him and dumped her right there. He and his friends then took an Uber back and left her stranded at the bar with no money and no way back. She then had to use her phone's GPS and walk back to the hotel from the bar barefoot. She had heels and walking two miles in those was not going to cut it. She was asking her mom and sister for help as he wouldn't let her in the room to get her luggage or her wallet. My heart broke. I felt horrible. I helped this guy treat this poor woman like crap 
Now he and all his friends were up there laughing at her while she's sitting in our lobby sobbing and with nothing. I went over to our snacks area in the lobby, grabbed her a bottled water and brought it to her. I told her that I couldn't help but overhear the conversation and was very sorry for her situation and asked if she would like us to help. I informed her that if he was keeping her from getting to her things, we could call the police and have them force him to hand over her things so she could leave if she'd like. Or, if she wanted to let her mom or sister pay for a room, we'd be happy to give her a very low rate in a room far from him. She thanked me, took the water and tried to calm down and talk to me about what all was happening and what her options were. Eventually, we decided on her staying in the hotel for the night and figuring out the rest in the morning. As we make it to the desk, she asks me to try and run her credit card to see if it has enough on it for another room. I ask her what she means by another room and she tells me that she's actually paying for the room he's in. That his name is on the room because he booked it, but it's her card paying for everything. This intrigued me. I asked why she was paying for the room if it was in his name. She told me that she's the one with the job, not him. That he hasn't been able to find a job in his field since graduating from college and is essentially living off his parents' money. But just after they started dating, his parents cut him off, so he's been living off of her money. That's why she was so upset and confused by how he was acting all night. He was sweet in doing everything for her back home, but since he met up with his friends, he did a 180 and hasn't been the same guy the entire time. I wanted to tell her that it was obvious he was using her for the money and that he would probably blame his friends for all of this and try to get back with her later on. But I doubted that she would have listened to me or cared for a complete stranger to butt in on her personal life like that. So instead, I offered up a sweet piece of revenge. I informed her that considering she's the one paying for the room, if she can confirm that it is her card on file with some sort of photo ID and verify the last four digits of the card number, that's honestly all this hotel company required, then she could, if she wanted to, kick him out of the room and keep it all to herself. But considering how poorly her night had been, if she were indeed to prove she is the one paying for the room, then I'd be more than happy to provide her the biggest luxury upgrade we offered at our property. Largest suite we had, full hotel amenity access. I'd even have my co-worker fish out a bottle of champagne and some fresh strawberries for her to have sent to her room, all free of charge. She was taken aback by the offer and was very sincerely tempted. She looked like she was about to say no. Then I told her that since she would be upgrading her room, that would require moving her things from that room and into her new one. Which means the room that she's currently listed in would need to be vacated immediately. If anyone were to remain in the room after we had demanded it to be vacated, we are required to have them escorted off the property or they pay for the room. Their choice. She then thought about it, pulled up her card's banking app and showed me the screen. It had a photo of her, her full name, the card's full number and the hold from our hotel for the room. She asked if that worked. It was good enough for me. I quickly upgraded her, moved everything over in the system and before I could say a word to my co-worker he was already grabbing a set of master keys, a bell cart and was asking her what her luggage looked like since he would be the one retrieving it for her to deliver to her room. He didn't want her to have to deal with her ex again. She smiled and told him which ones were hers and that she hadn't unpacked yet. My co-worker runs down to the elevators and up to fetch her things while I make her a new set of keys and send her off to her new room. Once she's on the elevator, my phone at the desk starts ringing. It's the ex-boyfriend and he's very angry about why my co-worker has entered the room and is taking her things. I calmly explain that I cannot give out the private information of any of our guests and that if he would like to remain in his room, he will need to pay for it as there is no longer a method of payment on his room. He blew up. He's making a ton of demands and at the same time yelling at my co-worker to stop what he's doing. But it's obvious from the way he's yelling at him that my co-worker isn't listening to him. I can even hear the guy's friends telling him to chill out and just pay for the room. I then explain that we will give him a courtesy 10 minutes to make a decision. At which point, if he doesn't have payment ready, then he must vacate the building or we will be forced to call the authorities and have him evicted. He continues to yell at me. He screams, swears, threatens and yells for a solid minute before taking a breath. I then tell him he has nine minutes remaining and asks if he has come to a decision yet. He hangs up on me. Nine minutes later, I call the room and he doesn't answer. I call again, no answer. I call a third time. He picks up, then immediately hangs up. I call the police and tell them what's going on and they said they're on their way. The officers arrive. I tell them what's going on. We go up to the room together and the man and his friends are all white as ghosts when they see the cops. The cops explain to the ex-boyfriend and his friends that they're being evicted. The ex-boyfriend starts trying to talk to me, but the cops stop him and tell him to only talk to them. I told him about his attitude on the phone before. 
The friends are all offering to pay for the room at this point and the cops look to me and ask if that would be acceptable. I smile very sweetly and say, No. And the cops nod and start rushing all of the guys to grab their things and leave the room. The ex-boyfriend is the last one out of the door carrying his two bags and complaining that he isn't even given a luggage cart and has to carry his own things. His friends all look pissed at him. I go with the officers to escort all of them out of the building and run into my co-worker in the lobby. He waits until they're all outside in the parking lot to tell me that the woman is in her new room, loves it and said no to the champagne, she just wants to sleep. I didn't get to see her before she left town the next day, but the ex-boyfriend did try calling our hotel to complain a number of times and even tried leaving some bad reviews of us online and lied through all of it. I hope she doesn't have to ever deal with him again. Down in the comments, long past the due date, it says, Silly man, the bros before hose rule doesn't apply when she is the one paying for your life. What did he think was going to happen? She's paying for your life and now you don't have her anymore. You idiot. J Nelson Ninja X. Lovely revenge. BF should have thought this whole thing through before trying to ghost her. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.